Well, hello everybody. It's me, and I'm here because I saw an awesome video on um, on YouTube uh, from Marame Small Art. If I can remember, I'll add the link down below. But it was one of her mixed media canvases she used um, clothespins for. And I was asked, I was commissioned to design um, a photo album. And with the likes of the person that I was commissioned this for, because this is going to be a gift for somebody else, um, this is the style that I think she would like the most. And uh, her other favorite is uh, sunflowers. Well, I don't have any regular sunflowers, but right now I've got these. All right. And it's going to do for now, maybe, but I still have to paint the, the wood. Now, what this is, is um, paint wooden, wooden clothespins. Where'd the thing go? There it is. And what's funny about it is that I bought a pack of 50, all right, and then I separated them, which was really easy because all you had to do was just kind of twist them and then they just pop right off. And here's the spring for them. And uh, I was able to use all, uh, this one I don't think I glued in yet. I, I've used every one of the halves minus one, and I don't know where I put that, so I might have ended up using it too. That looks like I might have. Um, so there's a hundred halves here that just covered most of this 12 by 12 album. I'm wondering, let me see, because I'm not getting, there we go. See, I'm not getting some good light because of the way my window is set. And what I did was I twisted them up apart and then kind of cobbled them together to look like, almost like pallet wood. And then of course there were some gaps, so I used uh, Scrabble tiles um, to kind of fill in the gaps. And I sent a picture of this to the lady that, uh, that commissioned it for me, or from me. And she said she likes it. So once I get it all glued on, um, I've only got these bottom three rows uh, attached. I'm, uh, I'm going to use some spray ink and I'm going to spray it. Um, and hopefully we'll get it right. If not, I'll gesso it and I'll do it all over again. So this is all I'm doing. I'm using matte gel medium because I don't have enough E6000 to, uh, you know, to, to handle this. But matte gel medium works really well as well. So I'm just putting it on the bottom and a little bit along the sides. And I've kind of cobbled these pieces together because it's part leather on one side or leather look, you know, which is a smooth. And then this section right here is separated by a ribbon with a metal ring. And then this side is cloth and kind of good thing. I decided I was only going to do it on the leather because I would have run out if I'd have worked it over onto the cloth side. But this is all I'm doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this all done. I'm going to let it dry. And then I will come back and, yeah, I will come back and let you know, let you see what we've got done so far when all this is glued on. Because I know you're not going to want to sit here and watch me glue all this. I mean, just bleh, kind of boring. So, but yeah, I'm 60 subscribers shy of a thousand. So thank you very much for those of you who have supported me and um, I forget how I wanted to do that. I guess I'll go this way. And there we go. Okay. And on that note, once I hit a thousand, I'm going to do a super big giveaway. Um, super big. So 
because that's a big milestone for a new YouTuber. And granted, you know, my channel's been around for a while, but I only started doing videos, I believe, a year and a half ago, maybe two years, something like that. And uh, it's been it's been an interesting ride. I've met a lot of great people. So I can't wait to see what the future brings. So I'm going to pause this, and when I get done gluing this, uh, I will be back. Okay, so far I've got... Oh, fooey, I did not want to do that. Yeah, I, I'm really, really happy with the layout that I've got, so I didn't want to take it all off. <laughs> yeah, okay, so I'm a goober, I can't help it. So I've only got a little bit of space, but I've got up to here so far. And what I'm doing is I'm just going row by row. You know, I'm gluing the bottom and the sides. It gives it a little bit more support to hold it together. And like I said, I decided I was going to use matte gel medium for this. As a lot of times I have to remember which way I, I had it on the thing, but when I go to put it back in there, it's usually pretty self-explanatory as far as what, which way it goes, because that was the way it was, <clears throat> you know, laid out. Let's see. Another thing I like about using matte gel medium is it gives you a little bit of time, you know, to wiggle around and move things the way you need it to before it sets. Yeah. I wanted to make sure which side was going up and which was down. See right here, and this gives me a little bit of leeway to move it around. Like I said, they've staggered. I've had some flipped over right side up. Let me see if I can lift this up a little bit without everything crashing to the ground, and you can see what I mean. Well, okay, well, that didn't help. But at least it was only one, right? Oh, two, three, okay. Maybe I got them pushed over just a little bit too much. Yeah, I really, really didn't want to try and figure out how to piece them all back together again. That just would not have been fun for me. So I just kind of wanted to give you an update as to where I was, and I'll be back. Okay, um, I've got this all glued on, see, not coming off, but it still needs to set. So I'm going to lift this, put this to the side, and then another thing I wanted to, to just kind of do with you. I haven't done this before, so it's going to be one of those new things. This is the, the same person who commissioned me to do the other album. I had another one and this is old you can see it's stained um, she said she got it in her garage um, she didn't quite know what to do with it it's rather old so but I said well instead of throwing it away let me see what I could do with it and we'll try and cover it and see if that'll work and so that is what I'm going to do but to do that obviously I'm going to have to take it apart now these are the type where you can, um, where if you flip over the inside, it's got the screws here where you can add, wow, there's too much white. Here, let me throw this in here. That helps. Nope, not quite. So let me throw that over there. Does that help? Uh, come on. Focus. There we go. All right. So we'll just leave that there for just a minute so we don't use up 
you know, like shock my camera into completely going nuts. But you unscrew these, and this is how you can, you know, replace these. This is obviously old, so she's going to have to replace these. But you can add more and take away some and, you know, that type of thing. So to, to be able to um, recover this completely, what I'm going to have to do is pull this apart and do each side individually. So let's try that, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, I do have to turn this over. Let me pull this. This is one of the fabrics. She she likes reds and fall colors, but that's not the one she chose. I got this as a remnant from, uh, I believe, Hobby Lobby. And uh, this is the one she chose. So this is the one I'm going to try to use. But to do that, I've got to take this apart. Now, you could probably just use a, a, you know, a letter opener, a quarter, or whatever. It's really not hard to do. I've got a band-aid on my finger, so it's... Come on. And they're not very long-winded. I don't know why it's taking so long to come out. Yeah, that band-aid's not helping, but I'm not taking it off, so. But yeah, that's all I'm doing is I'm just unscrewing these. Oh, it's working a little bit. There we go. And make sure you don't lose these. So I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to do the same to this one. Sorry if my fingers are in the way. I'm going to pull that off. See how easy that comes off? So that's one piece. Yeah, see this is the back. It's got water damage, that type of thing. Now, before I cover it, I'm going to spray it down with some Lysol because it's that germ killer disinfectant, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Set that aside. And this piece, this is the piece that, let me see where the other one is. Here we go. This piece right here. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I don't really, maybe I can find something different. Anyway, um, but it's the piece that goes right here in the center, the center, oh, set that aside. So I don't quite know what I'm going to do with that. Like I said, I haven't done this before, so let's just see what we see. And there we go. Okay, so we'll set these aside. Now, this is one of those 12 by 12 albums. Honestly, I'm wondering if I can't just... I don't know, that might not work. I've never done, like I said, I've never done this before, so... There. Because this is going to get folded up like that. And the other one is going to be folded up like that. I may not need that centerpiece, but we'll see. And let's open this up. This is the wrong side. And that's the right side. So... Let's see what we've got. Okay, we want a little bit for a fold over. Not so much that it's going to cover this. So. 
And I can always trim it so it's no big deal. So let's see what we see. Alrighty. It doesn't cover, but that. Oh, that'll be pretty. All right. Uh, where's my scissors? Here we go. that piece cut. I'll put this right here. I'm going to pause this and actually let me do this. I'm going to pause this so I can go spray both sides and I will be right back. Okay. So I sprayed it but let's see if there's any way to get some of this off. And if not, it's like I said, no big deal. It's going to An old toothbrush. All right, let's put this here. Set this off to the side. Rut row raggy. I may have to get some more fabric tac Let me see. Can you use tacky glue on fabrics? I have no idea. It just says all purpose glue. I just don't want it to like soak through. Not intended for washable wearables. Okay, well, this isn't going to be washable, but. Uh, okay. Make sure the pattern on it's going to at least be even. Okay. So let's try this. Oh yeah, I'm going to have to poke holes. I wonder how that works. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I bet I can use it. No, I can't use an eyelet because it might take up too much space. All right. Well, let's figure it out. Okay, one second. Okay, so I started, I forgot to push play again, or record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try this on just the, the binding and see how that works. But yeah, I'm going to have to get some more Fabri-Tac. Did not realize I was that low. And this is upholstery fabric, it's not just plain cotton. So that might help so that the you know the stuff doesn't come through. And again, too much white. There we go. Sorry about that. I don't have one of those fancy dancy cameras that can show the difference. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that closed so the fabric will adhere. I don't know how long it takes for fabric tack to work. Honestly, I don't remember. It's been so long. Uh, 
These are those mega giant binder clips and I love them for certain projects. Okay, so we're going to leave that there for a few minutes and I will be back to see how it worked. And uh, I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, well, I'm back and it's been about 30 minutes or so and it's holding really well. So, <clears throat> I'm go ahead and fold this over and trim what I can. I left it right side up, so it's going to take a minute for it to come down. lid back on. We'll turn it upside down for a minute. <clears throat> and I don't need the big ones this time, so... Yeah, I was at a consignment store and they had like a giant half-gallon size baggie <clears throat> full of different size binder clips. And I think the whole thing, there was about 50 binder clips in there. And I believe the whole thing was like maybe five bucks. And I used these things all the time. I use them to hold my journal pages apart. Um, I use them to secure things when I'm gluing. Uh, just all kinds of stuff. They're perfect for the ends of your to your toothpaste. Um, you know your tube glue. Usually I have it on my E6000, but I have. I think I was out for a while. And I ended up using it, but see, you can see my crimp where I used to keep it. So, but yeah. Let's see, can you use this on? It doesn't say whether or not you can use it on. It says it's flexible, so industrial strength. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I guess. I don't remember. <clears throat> oh, yeah, usually I keep one on the end of my my glue and my toothpaste like this and it keeps it all squished to the end okay so we'll leave that go and we'll check back on the other in just a minute well I know it's been just a little bit. Actually, it's the next morning. So, good morning, everybody. I know it's probably a silly thing to say because for you, it's only been a snap. But for me, I'm enjoying a nice hot cup of coffee. Ooh. I will set that right there. And hopefully it will not be in the way. Okay, so let's check and see how well this is going to. Oh, that looks good. That looks really good. Let's flip it up. Oh, that's going to be nice. Okay, I should have trimmed the corners before I did that, that's okay. Uh, 
uh, trimming the corners at an angle so that way when they fold in they'll meet up a little bit better. Well, except for that one. Wrong, but we'll turn this. Now, when I'm cutting it at an angle, I'm not taking it all the way. I'm leaving, you know, so that way I don't have a raw edge when I'm uh, gluing everything up. I have a feeling I'm going to end up trimming some of this, but... Oops. There you go. Alrighty. I'm still going to... I know what I'm... I don't think I've got a, uh, an eyelet big enough. Let me... Pull my drawer out. It's got my eyelets and brads. I made uh, this little cabinet. Um, I bought two of them. There was a four, it's like a little four drawer dresser. I think I got two of them at Hobby Lobby and they were on sale. Okay, there's some eyelets right there. And, uh, they were, uh, plain wood. That was what I was thinking. I don't think those are going to be big enough. Anyways, but, and then I had them for, I just let them set, or I had one first. And then I just let it set and let it set and didn't know what to do with it. Finally, one day, I mean, I had it for like a couple years. And then I seen another one just like it. Uh, same place, Hobby Lobby. And I went ahead and snagged it too. So then I ended up with two that I didn't know what to do with. You ever do that? I don't know. It's just one of those things where your brain says, you know, there's a reason. You just got to do it. <sighs> so I bought it. And then... Um... I probably had both of them together after that for probably another six months. Until I bought this pad of paper. And I know that if you're as crazy as me, you know inspiration comes at the weirdest of times. <clears throat> and I bought this pad of paper and I thought, gosh, how pretty that would be. It's like a wallpaper or something like that. I don't even remember which pad of paper it was, but it included a sheet that had this on it. <laughs> and, uh, and by chance I had some spare sheets that had, uh, um, that were coordinating colors. I'm sorry. I still haven't had enough coffee yet. So, just one day I grabbed out my Mod Podge and my sandpaper and I started Mod Podging them. I had to pull all the, the... Yeah, I do not think these are going to fit. That's going to be way too big. Yeah. I might have some bigger ones, but... Anyway, so I Mod Podged all four or all eight of the drawers. Now I had to take the hardware off, sand them down, and then shellac. Anyways, I came out with two really nice sets of dressers. In fact, oh, I probably can't do that now because I mess up my camera at the moment. But I don't know. really came out good. So, 
and now I use them all the time. I've got one that's got all my like my uh, alcohol wipes and and credit the, like little plastic credit cards slash shopping cards, gift cards, things that I use for my crafts. I've got one that's got um you know my chalk. Anyways, I keep them for my uh uh my bits and bobs, and I have them on my dresser. Let's see, this one's got. Oh, yeah, I need to do some work, but still. I mean, this is the other one, the other series that has my, uh, that has the matching. Anyway. But. Uh, see, now I bet that would be really nice in one of this. Not this one, but the other one. I forgot I had these butterflies. See, funny things, weird things that just tend to, catch you at odd times. But, okay, I'm going to pause this for just a minute and I'm going to go look in my other little container and see if I have any eyelets that are big enough. Um, if not... Then what I'm going to do before I uh, attach this all the way is I'll probably put this back together. So give me one second. Okay, then no, I do not. I do not. These are way too big. And these itty bitty things um, are way too small. That's uh, just kind of what I've got you know, in handy. And I found this pendant, which I thought might look really, really nice somehow. Maybe just in an, as an embellishment. But it's again, it's like one of those things where um, you think I'm going to use it. I just don't know how because it feels right. <laughs> I'm going to trim this just a little. Going to glue this side up a little. Pull this as evenly as possible. <laughs> Apparently I did not cut that as evenly as possible, but I'm just going to trim that now because if not, it's going to get on my nerves. Okay. <laughs> not much better, but this part will be covered up. See, and that'll mostly be trimmed off anyway. And again, I'm going to grab my clips. Uh 
Uh-oh. I think maybe when we do that, I think I pulled it a little too tight. So I'm going to pull this back just a little. There. After it's folded over, then glue. Oh yeah, that's a big difference. And that was, I'm glad, a mistake I found before everything dried because I didn't have this folded over. Anyways, the tension was all wrong. <clears throat> so now I will put this on. Yeah. yeah, you can tell the big difference. So I'm going to wait. My cat, Kitty Purry, is absolutely, I think she's done lost her mind. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm just going to hold that like that so it doesn't automatically open and then the fabric loosens. But look how pretty that side is. I love this pattern. It was just a remnant I got. See, that's not even glued, so why the heck? Anyways, it's just a pattern I got, or a remnant I got it at Hobby Lobby. And, um, uh, I love upholstery fabric because it's so durable. You can use them for, you know, outdoor pillows, throw pillows, things like that. Um, and they make, like I said, this was perfect. The roll I got, I believe, <clears throat> yeah, it was um, not even, a, it was, it's 54 inches wide. And it says uh, 21 yards, but that can't be right because that was not 21 yards. So maybe it's just 2.1 yards. Anyways, but marked 11.65. I got it for 6.99. <sighs> I usually don't pay that much, but I really like this pattern. And uh, when it's 11.99 a yard. You know, hey. <clears throat> so, okay. I'm going to let this dry. And I will talk to you guys in a little bit. Okay. I've got these two sides done. But when I miscalculated... I'm pulling and tightening because I forgot about this fold. It cut me short on this corner. So what I did was um, one of the scrap pieces I had cut off. One of the corners actually that looked like that. Um, I glued it and folded it over to cover that. And, you know, you can always fix <clears throat> what's uh, a mistake, as long as you can recognize you've made one. And I did, so, but again, this is my first time doing something of this nature. And when I'm gluing, I'm not, I'm not gluing all the way down because, you know, obviously I'm going to, uh, trim. And uh, we don't want all this extra bulk. I'm going to trim and then I'm going to cover, uh, this whole piece so that you don't see the raw edges. And 
and there we go. <clears throat> okay, before I even start, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more of these. I'm sure there are other glues out there that work on fabric just as well. But with, um, you know, the material that I'm using, which is a bit tougher than, uh, than just regular plain weave cotton, um, makes me think that I'd want to use a more of an industrial type blue. And with that in mind, um, uh, there we go. I want to use the correct product. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of pulling the fabric a little bit taut, tight, over the um, surface. Yeah, not enough coffee. Let me grab some coffee here. Sometimes I think uh, this should have an IV hooked up. Pretty up this corner. And go ahead and do all my tucks. Both of those sides dry. And while that does, I'm going to get the stuff together and pull over the, uh, the first album I started working on. So, and we will check to see how we're going to Here. There we go. And we'll check to see how we're going to stain the wood or paint it. I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to do that yet. So um, I will see you in just a second. Okay, I was thinking about just leaving it um, as is and staining it, but I believe I'm going to gesso it first. And this is homemade gesso. I got the recipe from Pink Poodle Crafts, uh, Stacy Evans. And it works fabulously. And there are many recipes out there. But the one that I found works the best 
is the one from her. Uh, the one from her. So, let me see. I definitely need to get some more paintbrushes that, that work. I only have two number 10s, you know. Uh, or I believe they're number 10s. This is a Ranger. Some call them number 2, some call them number 10s. But, uh, you get a favorite brush that you just, you know, you don't want to get rid of. Okay. Well, I guess I'll just use my glue brush. Now I'll use one of these. And I didn't bring my can of water. Oh, fooey, fooey, fooey. Okay, give me just a second and let me go rectify that. D to D. Okay, I probably should move my coffee because it's about the same size. And my luck, I'll end up throwing my paintbrush in my coffee instead of the water and drinking the water. That would be an absolute travesty. Okay, so we'll put that off to the side. So let's see what we see. I'm just kind of throwing this under here, scrap piece of paper, to protect what's already there. Uh, for those of you who might not know, is gesso is a type of uh, primer. I don't know that much, you know, about science and, and all of that, but, um, what it does is it prepares the surface to take different kinds of media. Uh, for instance, um, it's like how you have to sand wood sometimes to, uh, before it'll take a, a stain or a paint. Sometimes you have to prime your walls because you, we had red walls and now you want white ones. Well, you'll have to prime it first to block the, the undercolor. Or you'll have 70 different, you know, coats of white just to cover that red that comes through. Um, primer also helps to seal a porous surface. Like I said, I'm not very scientific about this. And all I know is if I sprayed this before I primered it, this wood would just soak it all up. And I wouldn't get, it's not that I want even and uniformity, but I want something that I can count on to give me the result I'm hoping for. And that's what Gesso does. Now, obviously, Gesso does not give you talent, and I never claim to have any <laughs> But it sure helps make those of us that are not, you know, PhDs in art look better. So, and this takes just a few minutes. So let me finish gessoing this so you don't sit here. You have to sit here and watch me paint. And I will be right back.
Okay. So I've got this gessoed. It's got to dry. And I'm going to let that dry. It takes a minute because you've got all these little cracks and crevices and things like that. You want to make sure it gets gets good and gets good and coated. <clears throat> Put that away. I do not think I'll need a second coat. But I'm going to let that dry and then we shall be back. Okay, I'm back. This is dry. I had to run up to the store and pick up some more paintbrushes and I got some more something along the lines of fabric tack. It was just a little bit cheaper. <clears throat> But I got this value pack of brushes for, I think it was like five bucks, or 25 in them. And I needed some more. And now we're going to try and see what we can't do about this. And let's see what we see. This is some yellow Sharpie alcohol ink. Um, you grab the sharpie, the fat ones, not the, not the real skinny pinpoints. You pull off the end and you pull out the nib and then you pull, pour the thing out. I cut it up, put it in a little spray bottle and added alcohol and let it set overnight. And this gives me a really pretty spray. So let's see. Well, it's almost a little too yellow and you can't see that from there. Okay, so we'll leave that. I'm thinking this is a distress stain I got in a, uh, like a miscellaneous pack I bought. But I believe it's almost too, too dark for what I need. So I'm going to kind of squirt some down in here. There we go. <clears throat> and add some water because I really just kind of want to whitewash. I don't really want to, or like a light wash, not a, a really strong stain. And that is too stiff, so I need a softer bristle. Oh, let's see. This is a Daler Rounding. It's a three quarter inch, but it's, it's almost like a makeup brush at the end. So let's see how this works. It's a little bit softer. Mm, works a little bit. Pull that down here some. Doesn't quite get under everything, but it covers a lot. The only thing I don't like about a soft brush is it seems to give up, like lets go of its bristles. And that's kind of surprising for a Daler Rounding, yeah, for a Daler Rounding brush. I think I'm going to have to add more. Add more ink. Yeah, that just kind of soaked it all up. Let's 
take this is um, acrylic paint with alcohol. I was trying some different things. With different types of paints. And some with water, some with alcohol, some with, you know, different other mediums to see what I would come up with. <clears throat> we need to add some to the top. Just a little bit of water. see what we get. And always, if it doesn't come out the way you think it should or the way you want it to, you can always gesso over it. You know, white gesso and redo. Do just that. I'm not sure yet. I think I'm just going to put a little bit of blue on these blank ones so that it's not so stark. I don't know. Tell me what you think. And we will let this dry. Yeah, I think we'll let this dry. And we'll be right back. I'm going to use a little bit of brown and whoops that didn't look good okay well that one's not even working wow okay I'll have to transfer that one what else do we want well I'll add a little bit of water. Maybe a little bit more. Because we don't want it, you know, super concentrated. We want it kind of in a wash. Still, yeah, see, that's still too dark for me. Oh, but wiping, wiping it off would work. I still think I want to add a little bit more water to it. Oh, my bottle's almost empty. There we go.
I'm going to get in some of the little white holes. Yeah, like I said, again, this is the first time I've done anything like this. And when I saw, I mean, obviously, Marta on uh, Merrimay's Small Art, when she did hers, it was on a canvas. And, um, of course, she's, to me, she's one of the uh, best mixed media artists I've come across. Now, that's not saying much as far as mm, I'm concerned, but I do love mixed media, and she's very, um, she's very, very good at it. I like her style, you know. Some people might not, and that's fine, because art is always subjective. <clears throat> I don't like that delineation, but that's okay. Let's see what we got. I didn't like that yellow once it dried, so you can't really see it on camera, at least not what I'm looking at, but at the same time, I can see it here, and I don't like it that much, so... probably could have lightened the brown paint some. That might have worked before I added the water. But we'll see. Mm. This would probably work a whole lot better with sprays, but I'm not very good with them. I don't use them very often. So I would be worried that, uh, I'll let that set for a minute, you know, that I wouldn't quite get what I wanted. I feel like I've got, me personally, I've got more control with the brush. And why is that not picking up? There we go. Okay, I guess just a little bit. <clears throat> now, I will tell you, okay, I like that a little better, putting some of that brown over the blue with mixed media. It really is all about the layers. And I like running the, a light coat over the blue. So I think I'm going to take a darker brown and maybe just dry brush over the brown that I've got going on now. Yeah, because I kind of like that. You know, the whole point is trying to make it almost look like uh, you know, wood. In an artistic way, of course.
And I think I'm going to use a little bit of this antique linen right here and lighten that one up some. So it's a little dark for me. Let me kind of rinse this out just a little bit. Add a little bit of water and then spread it. a little bit lighter. <clears throat> and we will let that layer dry. Um, I think I know why I like this one up here a little bit more is because it's uh, I've got the yellow layer underneath it. And it dripped. So I'm going to clean that up. But yeah, I think. But that's okay. Like I said, it's not perfect. And that Sharpie was a little on the bright side, so there's a piece of brush hair. Let's see, that's the one thing you want to be careful on when you purchase your brushes is, you know, you get really cheap brushes and then one, they're not going to hold up as long, but uh, depending on what you use them for, um, can either work really well or tear them up or the brushes just aren't that good and uh, there we go a little bit of that and a little bit of that all right so we're going to let this dry and see what we see and when we come back I'm might decide to go ahead and just add the little bit I'm hoping will work. That didn't make any sense at all, did it? All right, well, I'll be back. Okay, it's pretty dry. I'm going to do some dry brushing now. See if I can't give this a little bit more depth. And I'm going to use a darker brown. This one's burnt umber. And I don't need that much, so... Okay. So, dry brushing. Say it's not very, not very um, noticeable, but it does give, like I said, it does give some depth. And as I'm going along what would normally be uh, like wood grain, it gives that effect of, um, you know, real wood. So we're going to see how, see what we come up with.
Oops, it's a little bit dark right there, so I'm going to kind of wipe that off. <clears throat> and it does kind of um, give the uh, the impression of a wood grain that looks almost aged. Just going to kind of see what we see. And like I said, if worse comes to worse and I don't like it, and oops, that was a little bit too much. Let's wipe some of that off. We can always gesso it and redo it. And it also takes some of that brightness down. To a more, you know, muted level, so to speak. much. And I think, I think that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? blatant in some spots it's more overall uh, and what I did do before I did this second coat is I took some my black um, alcohol ink and just kind of splattered I'll show you what I did <clears throat> I just splattered and because it's alcohol when it soaks in it kind of blends into the wood so that it uh, it doesn't just look like black dots it looks like aged age spots Let's see. And let's pull this out. There's some dust on this. Clean this off. And who is that? I had some flowers. She likes sunflowers, but that's the closest I have. And I'm not really happy with that. So I may go up to Hobby Lobby or someplace like that and see if I can't find a better um, a better looking sunflower for the front of that. So, but yeah, I think that came out really, really nicely. Let's see if you can see that very well. looks like aged wood to me. And we will 
we'll set this aside for now. And let that completely dry. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to take a picture and show the progress to the person who I'm who commissioned this for me and we'll be back to work on the next the other one. Okay, so we're we've moved over to this one for now. This has all been dried, so I'm going to take in trim. I forgot to grab my my scissors. Let's try this. I'm going to trim the excess off. Just like that. And where is it? I was looking to see, and I wasn't thinking honestly, or I might have made these a little bigger. But I was thinking 12 by 12, right? So I was looking at some papers and things like that that might work really well inside. And then um, I realized that, duh, the papers themselves would be, let's just use this as an example would be 12 by 12. I mean, I could get away with, you know, something like that. But then I've got this strip right here. You know, that could almost work. Should have got some fray stuff. Alrighty. You know, so that could almost work. Or scoot it this way a little bit and add some lace. I don't know. But I'm thinking that's how I'm going to do it. It's just like this. I do need to trim this little piece right here. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this corner. Oh, come on. There we go. All righty. And then we're going to go ahead and cover the other side. And I'm going to cover that before I decide. I think I'm going to cover it and then put it back together. And that will give me an idea of how much space I'll have. So I need to hold that. Yeah, fabric tack takes actually it takes about two to four hours to set up completely. So I'm going to leave that right there. And I'm gonna get the other one and we'll start covering that one. There we go. <clears throat> Put this off to the side. Okay, so now we need a piece for this whole thing. Well, I love this fabric. I think this is just absolutely gorgeous. 
so what we're going to do is let's do it this way. And I'm not going to cut myself so short this time, I believe. Make sure that stays open. I don't need that right there. So put the paint brushes up. And we'll slide this up a little bit. Alrighty. And as you can see, I'm not, you know, being super particular about exact measurements and things like that because, I don't know, to me it just seems a little bit more organic. Now, if it was a project that obviously needed specific measurements, then, you know, that would be different. Alrighty. Let's see how far out we want to go with this. Let's go about right here. And there we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. But I think this time I'm going to do this side first instead of this. Make sure I'm even. Oh, I still have a little bit left in here, so let's work on this. I'm just about out. It's at the very, very bottom. Finding it hard to all right, so we'll lay this down. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the corners really quickly and get an idea. over. And of course, I'm going to clip it to hold it in place while it dries. that's going. Oh gosh, I wish this was going to be mine. Oh, I love this. I 
Okay, now I didn't do this on the last, on the other side, but I am going to do a little bit on this side. Maybe, yeah, I think I am. At least along the edges. Oh, wow, that just came right out the side. Holy crap, look at that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think I just used the last of the fabric tag <laughs> right there. Good grief. Okay, that was an oops. Ugh. I'm almost about done dealing with that one. Okay. Oh, good grief. I'm still going to have to figure out what to do about those holes. But that's okay. And on that note, yeah, this is just kind of blast. I'm going to throw it out. All right. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and hang this video up, and I will do a part two. I still need to do my part two on my mermaid journal, but I was waiting on some stamps to come in from Poland, uh, from this company called AB Studios. Um, it's a Polish brand, and what they do is they have a website, and it's AGA, no, sorry, it's shop.aga. B A R A N I A K dot com. And uh, when you order their stamps or their stencils or whatever you get, you order, they make them when you order, which is awesome. So they don't have a whole lot of overstock, they don't have a whole lot of overhead, you know, to uh, worry about shop space, things like that. But they create it for you. So if you're, you know, in the United States, it took me, after I ordered them, it took probably a good, I think, month, four to five weeks to get all together. But the prices were phenomenal. And uh, I got a couple of some, uh, what do you call it? Uh, these are just letter stamps, you know, that's got the alphabet. This has got numbers on it. This one does. This one's a small alphabet. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah. And then I also ordered, which I thought was really cool since Halloween is coming up, some bat wings. Now what happened, which was awesome, is they also sent me a thank you gift of a free stencil. And I love this stencil. So I haven't gotten to use it yet, but, but yeah, the company is called AB Studios. You can Google it. And they're just, I was really, really happy. And like I said, the prices were awesome. And the shipping was not, that's, I mean, that, I mean, the shipping was just, uh, I think if you purchase a certain amount, you get free shipping or something. I don't remember exactly offhand, but I remember I was really, really pleased when I seen it. <sighs> okay, so on that note, I'm going to finish this up on the next video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. And if you like my video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, um, please do so. I don't know which way it is from where I'm sitting. <laughs> Give me a comment. Let me know what you think. If uh, 
if you had a better idea or, or a more convenient or more uh, easier idea of any of the processes you've seen me do, uh, give me a comment, let me know. I'd be happy to take advice. Uh, and uh, so I will see you next time. And thank you again. Always, always, always remember to find the humor in life. Because if you don't, life sucks. Okay. Uh, have a great day, everybody. And God bless.